Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus and thank you for joining us on another recraft video. Today's video, got a pair of Gravatis getting some new soles. So come join us and check it out. So again, thank you for joining us. And uh, today we're working on these Gravatis that have been resold before by uh, another cobbler shop. Um, no comment on the shop. I'm not gonna say who it is, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Marcus is back there laughing. <laughs> if you know Marcus, you know what we're talking about. But um, this gentleman had a number of shoes that he brought in and they were great and everything but then i looked a little bit closer we had a little bit of a problem there with the heel block doing that it's making some large gaps there so it wasn't secured and instead of a full sole especially on a gravati he got half soles on them and they weren't even stitched so for those of you who don't know a half sole is typically replacing the leather from about here to the toe area so about an inch past where the black starts right here behind it is where the new leather starts and so it had some choppy sanding work here but again because it wasn't stitched you can see back here there's some stitching in the very back these were blake stitched originally but because uh the place that didn't that did the recrafting previously all they did was sand out the old sole a little bit thinner and then glue this leather over top but because of that there's this kind of gap problem right there just way too much and it's just a matter of time before it really splits open and the whole shoe really does start to fall apart unfortunately um, and i've seen it far too many times just because there's nothing holding that up or together and so the little edge of the leather that's tucked underneath just starts peeling up peeling up and all of a sudden you got a hole busting through and it can turn out a big big mess so we're going to be resoling them with uh, JR full soles today so definitely going to be stitching those guys and as I look closer there's like small little details here and there that are just all kinds of funky so I'm going to go ahead and start breaking them down and they use the GTO at least on it, so that's kind of cool. And then, for those of you wondering, GTO, yes, it's a type of brand of heel. Uh, Vibram makes one as well, but unfortunately, the current heel that's out for Vibram, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, their logo's imprinted very deeply, and so there's like these little groove patterns around it. I don't have one to be able to show you. But the problem with that groove pattern is it tends to pick up little rocks and pebbles. And so if you end up wearing your shoes indoors, you're going to either track in little pieces of rock all over the place, or if you have hardwood floor or some kind of nice tile, those rocks can get a little bit sh sharp and uh, scratch everything up. So... You know, GTO are great, Svig are great, Vibram are still great if they can just change up that pattern there, um, that's about it. Um, for for those of you wondering, like if you're especially out on the East Coast, uh, Svig is something you'll see very commonly out there, closer to Central US to West Coast, you're going to see GTO. Those two brands are very, very similar. They're two separate brands, but they're very similar as far as uh, quality build. Uh, one of our suppliers got some Svig in here. and it's pretty much the same quite literally no matter what anyone says they're the same but uh, back to these shoes so this explains uh, some of it I guess at least I guess I'm trying to figure out what, what all went down with these let's test something out first it is sure enough so this is uh, the situation turns out what we have here so it looks like this heel block was at one point or another removed off of this shoe whether it was either re being reattached or something 
and instead of nailing it in properly, there's a bunch of what's called wire nails running through it. Now wire nails are used, but in our case, for example, we tend to use wire nails strictly to hold a heel base together, but not to the boot or shoe itself. Wire nails, um, it basically, as the name implies, is just a roll of wire, and it's ran through one of the machines, like we have an auto solar here, and it just runs these little wires in there, and they basically nail everything down. A number of shops, especially around here in the Denver area, do this all the time, and it drives me nuts. Um, using wire nails such as this, it does not hold up very well. It's, it's quite literally designed just to hold on either really small, pieces of something or to hold a heel block together but not hold a heel block directly to a shoe otherwise uh, that is exactly what happens right there so now we know the problem and we're gonna fix that but later on but before I toss those aside I gotta grab a marker so we had the left shoe left Sure enough, I don't know how to spell Gravati. Okay, there we go. Now I know which uh, one it goes to. Okay, I'll take out these nails a little bit later. I'm going to carefully put it up top here so it doesn't get in the way of anything and potentially cause any kind of damages uh, to other shoes or myself. So I'll keep those safe until we're getting these to sit and dry with glue then I can find a little extra time to pull out all those nails out of that heel block there. Now at this point um, probably since there is that sole that they have over top I'm gonna have to go ahead and remove the half sole and get it out of the way. Typically I would I would take this shoe to the sander and just sand out the edges right where the stitching is but because there's already a half sole on it I'm gonna have to sand through the half sole first, waste my sand, the sanding belts, um, you know, waste more time. So I'm better off just removing that layer of leather that was placed here. And then I can deal with the original sole instead of dealing with this aftermarket stuff that shouldn't have been on there in the first place like this. Oh, that is a lot of glue. A lot. Oh. I'm gonna have to refill my turpentine bottle here. Solvent, technically called toluene, but I may have to refill that. I don't got much, not enough for these shoes, at least with all that glue that was used. That's uh, one of those things that drives me nuts sometimes some of these shops they'll sometimes use just way too much glue and I guess uh, sounds like a great idea using glue re extra reinforcement right but not really so in some cases if you have too much glue it actually comes apart a lot quicker than if there's not enough glue in some cases not all as you can tell in this case however I am struggling but just to give you an idea See how it's pulling apart there? So this is the aftermarket sole that was placed on here. This is a small portion of the original. This is the decorative welt because these are Blake stitched. And now that we've got everything opened up, you can see on the inside here, there's the stitching that was never, you know, holding anything down at this point. It was quite literally there for decoration for the inside of the shoe. So after a period of time, because this is such a bendable area right here, this is the kind of thing that would happen. And if you hold off on it longer and don't catch it, this leather upper will pop out and you'll end up actually having a hole to the point where you could actually stick your finger in and uh, feel your foot through there. But we're gonna get it all taken care of. And so I'm not wasting too much more of your time. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this since I'm struggling so much and do the same thing on the other one. Once I have both off, I'll be back and uh, let you check out a little bit closer to see what's going on with these shoes. All right, everyone, so I've taken these apart. I uh, went a little bit further on the left foot, I'm trying to figure out which foot I'm on. But, um, so, not much else going on under underneath out of either one of these, but as you can tell, everything's kind of splitting as you pull. So it gives you an idea. Imagine catching your toe right here and this thing just splits open, especially after a hot day. 
all that heat deactivating the glue and everything, that's kind of why stitches come into play. Good, Goodyear welted and Blake stitch shoes, you know, you catch that corner just a little bit at that toe or one of the sides, they're not gonna come apart very easily. If they're just glued on, you kind of have that problem. That would have been the case with these ones, but thankfully, thankfully that wasn't the issue because sometimes it could be a pretty messy fall. But now that I've got this one off, um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, as you can tell, there is the welt here. This is a decorative welt that's usually placed on here with these uh, little rib pieces there, just like that. And it's put on there again, just for a decorative purpose. On a Blake stitch sole, you could either go with or without a welt and trying to give it a little bit of more character. Welt definitely comes into play nicely. So you might be wondering why that's missing there. Well. Me and Marcus were pondering about it, and I think uh, it's just mainly to give it a more tapered profile right here under that arch there. So a little bit narrower, slimmer. Looks pretty nice, don't you think? I think it looks pretty cool. But uh, that's going to be fun to get that all back together because I'm going to have to possibly take off some of this. It looks like the back end's going to really stay on nicely, and it's all one piece. And then we're gonna have to pull out all these stitches. Now on the inside, as you can tell, and this is original, this isn't aftermarket since they didn't remove the old sole. Uh, there's cork underneath here, and it's just a small amount, not very much, it's just as a filler. And then right here at the ball of foot, there's this cushion piece here that's just a little bit on the tougher side, and it looks like it's starting to rot a little bit. Yeah, it's starting to rot some, there we go. interesting so it's just areas of it that are almost rotting but the rest of it just peeled off very nicely so it's just a cushion um, we're gonna go ahead and replace that with cork because it's probably all nasty absorbing all the sweat and moisture and it needs to be refreshed so even though it's a very small amount probably a sixteenth of an inch total that we may have to end up doing but still gonna do it I'm not just gonna leave it like that otherwise uh, there isn't going to be any insulation, breathability, moisture wicking away, so we definitely have to make sure that we have something there. But I'll remove this old one here as well, which is crumbling like crazy. Yeah. Yeah, even sounds bad falling there. But at this point, also, since I've got this sole and I've got you here. I'm going to go ahead and pull out some of these stitches real quick just to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like. So first things first, we've got to remove the insole. Oh, things in there good. It's really in there. All right, had to work on removing this guy. It was, uh, it was in there pretty good, so. Good thing we got that out and everything. Now, and that also gave me some time to find my favorite little pliers for this. One of these guys, little jeweler style needle nose pliers there. They grip very well for any of you cobblers out there. Go into a little jewelry aisle at uh, you know, either a hardware store or a hobby store and uh, look for the jeweler needle nose pliers. They, they work very well for a number of things, but just want to check. Looks like there isn't much I can pull out of these here. If I start pulling the stitching on the outside, it's actually going to pull a lot of the stitching from the inside of the shoe and cause the holes to kind of stretch out a little bit too much. So the best way for me to go is still through the inside for all of it. And it's just because of the way that uh, they had sanded out the old stitches. So I've got these uh, pincer style needle nose extended pieces that are actually for removal of fish hooks. Sorry, there, that, my little mustache's hairs are getting in, in the way. But uh, they're designed for pulling out fish hooks basically and we kind of reworked them taking off the little pins here at the end and now allows us to reach in a little bit further, grab a good safe point of the thread, and start pulling. Obviously, we're going to probably run into some ripping 
of the thread, so see, it's ripping out in some of the spots there. So I'm going to basically have to work at it sometimes piece by piece pretty much and pull out small pieces here and there and it's a pain when it's done improperly the first time but sometimes uh, you know, it's better if I just go through it and take a little extra time because my expectation for these shoes is that it's going to last them for years and uh, hopefully the next time he needs them resold here in anywhere between two to five years he comes back to us and uh, we'll take take care of it and when they're back in because I knew what I did to these and and I did a little bit more of a proper job I'm not gonna have to hassle go through the hassle so much in the future on these ones now, a good cobbler is going to plan ahead that, that's what I've noticed all the all the top cobblers and in, in the world anyone that posts pictures does videos any of the cobblers that I messaged with they all will take those extra steps with the expectation that these shoes are going to return back to them and even if they don't return back to them for a recrafting in the future um, you know it just it was done properly so the next guy working on them has a much easier job as well so that's a proper cobbler there for you if you find one like that they'll remove the stitches they'll go through whatever they can and do it right that's a good good way to identify your if you're visiting a local cobbler and you ask hey can you show me a sample pair of resole shoes uh, Blake stitch ones just uh, look on the inside typically if there's just a three-quarter length insole like this right here it's not a full length so that means you can see down in there closer to the ball the foot and the toe area if there's only one row of stitching, and yes, it might be off of the original holes a little bit because we, we can't see on the inside, so that's that's a very common thing to find. Even a skilled, uh, skilled cobbler that's been doing this for longer than I've been around won't always be able to get into the original holes, and a lot of times doesn't, uh, at least with the Blake stitch ones. But if you at least uh, see only one row of stitching, that's a good cobbler. That means they pulled out the old stitches. If you see two or three or four rows, that means those shoes have been resold multiple times um, or at least once and they're not uh, not pulling the old stitches and it's just a terrible job um, and those ones I advise be a little uh, a little cautious with uh, the more expensive shoes that you might have maybe they might be doing a good job on some something smaller like a set of heels or a quick shine or a small patch or stitch job but uh, a recraft might want to stray away from that one and check out the next cobbler same thing with the uh, Goodyear welted shoes if you look around the edges where it's stitched on the outside if you see multiple layers of stitching if it's kind of frayed up multiple places um, obviously in some cases cobblers are going to try the best they can to make it into the original holes it doesn't always work out to the to the way they hoped sometimes it may slip off just ever so slightly in an area things happen don't get all upset or anything like that but if you do notice multiple layers of stitching then oh, it's just Marcus then that's uh, that's another cobbler that you want to watch out for and uh, not sh not leave your favorite pair of shoes with so so I'm gonna mess with these for a little while get it all taken care of and uh, do the same thing with this other shoe and start getting them all prepped up I'll, I'll do this off camera too I'm gonna re-glue all that um, it, uh, the um, the welt area here before I start uh, sanding out this to remove that old cork and everything just because I want to make sure everything's secured in place properly before any sanding is done so I'll see you back all right everyone so we're back here again we've got the cork filled in all around here got everything glued up and uh, time to stick the soles on soles obviously have been traced out cut out uh, threw on our little Cobblers Plus logo. I always forget to put that thing on there. I gotta start remembering it a little more. Just pull these out of the oven so they're nice and warm. There it is. Yes, I know. I need to put up more, more hooks and all those sorts of stuff to hold my tools up better. never find the time unfortunately but I'm gonna have to make some serious time and really commit to 
putting some tools up over here in that area, but I don't want it getting in the way everywhere. So I'm gonna have to figure out a good, uh, good method of doing so. So we've got this glued on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stick this on the press and then let it cure for a little while. This back end, we usually don't cut it off too much just because that's gonna get cut off anyways with the uh, five in one cutter. And those pieces are still good to be able to use sometimes if we're punching a hole in our hole punching tools, we need to have a backing and this leather works great for it or other things, sometimes wedging it under something. There's a number of uh, good uses for a piece of leather about that big there. So we're not gonna chop it off unless we're able to get as close as possible as we can and uh, get as much use out of it. It's usually the front area that we're most concerned about anyways. So go ahead and stick that on the press, let it cure for a little while. I've got the other one in the oven. I've got to flip it around and we'll see you back here in just All right, everyone, so I've kind of shown the steps that we've gotten up to so far. We've got uh, everything trimmed out around the edges. We've got the heel block area sanded out a little bit rougher. We're gonna have to re-sand it just a little bit because of the finish, just a little bit, but it's good to mark it up uh, beforehand. And I just went through on the numb keg and kind of took off that original bottom finish because we're gonna be redoing the finish anyways. And um, that was kind of a rough sanding. It leaves like little, like, patterns almost on the leather because that numb keg spins around so at this point I'm switching over to the uh, palm sander and gonna sand it out now obviously during the sanding process what can happen very frequently is uh, that gold leaf may get hit just a little bit now gold leaf is obviously decorative so it's just aesthetics and uh, you're gonna wear through it basically within the first wear, but uh, we still really try, try not nicking that, but uh, it really depends on how deep it was pressed in because again, the machine that presses this in there and does the debossing basically is what it's called. Uh, sometimes it just didn't press hard enough or something. And uh, so there's, there's very, very little gap in other words for us to be able not to hit that gold leaf so it can happen but hey it's it, it, it's part of it basically so we'll do the best we can not to nick it i unfortunately did hit this one just a tiny bit already and i'm like oh come on but they're still jr soles they're gonna last for a while so let's go ahead and get started on this All right, so I've got them sanded off. Let me just blow it off real quick. Ooh, that's a lot of dust. 
So yeah, unfortunately it was not my day today. I did end up nicking it just a little bit there. So it happens, but uh, again, like I said, they are still JR leather soles. Man, I wanna, I wanna hang this up and like frame it up front somewhere, or maybe in the background of my workbench. But there may be a chance I may need to use up this piece because I haven't got my replacement in yet. And I was really hoping to save that one right there. We'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll have to save it from the next one or something. Or maybe I'll get it in time and just uh, be able to finally hang this one up. I got a little portrait behind me in my workbench area. So we'll kind of see how it goes. But uh, how to blow off all that dust. But at this point, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with the bottom finish. Um, this is actually one of Marcus's uh, customers here, and uh, we're going to be being a little bit creative on it. They haven't mentioned anything, so uh, Marcus left for the day. So I think uh, I might have a little bit of fun and do something interesting. So I don't know what I'm going to do yet. So you'll probably end up seeing it after I do some stitch work on it and everything, or while stitching. Uh, Give me just a minute on that and you may either see me stitching on the machines or after I'm done stitching all that and we'll kind of go from there. I mean, you've seen me stitch a number of times before, but this machine I don't use as often. It's the Blake Stitch machine. So I may have to show you guys, I guess. I guess I'll show you guys. So let me just do the bottom stain on it first and we'll go from there. All right, everyone. So here are the bottoms so far. We've got the TH on there. Again, I'm not going to mention the gentleman's name. If he wants to, you can comment down below if he's watching the video. But otherwise, um, yeah, it's just initials TH. So the, the uh, right foot I already stitched up, so now we're going to go ahead and stitch up the left. I've gone ahead and picked out purple on this. Um, seems like it actually blends in quite a bit with that blue there. So it doesn't stand out too much, but... At the same time, it gives it a nice touch. I, w I didn't want to do blue on blue, but purple on blue, I thought it would be a great color. And I wish I had silver thread. That would have been perfect. But unfortunately, I don't have that, and I haven't seen it. Not in, uh, not in a thread this wide for soles. But let's go ahead and get started on the stitching then. So I've got it all stitched up so um, as you can tell I'm a little bit slower on the Blake stitch machine this is actually called the McKay machine and uh, I'm a little bit slow just because surprisingly I actually don't use this thing as often compared to uh, the curve needle over here uh, most of the boots and shoes that I get through here are Goodyear welted Blake stitch is actually not very common for me anymore I used to run this machine at full force really fast just fine but getting a little rusty here with this uh, Blake stitch so but I'd rather take my time go a little bit slower and uh, you know get it taken care of right the first time instead of accidentally having a mistake and especially since the bottom finish is already taken care of but to give you an idea there now obviously we're gonna have to clean this out a little bit because there's like little small fine pieces of leather that pop up and everything and so when we're buffing it it'll kind of get a lot of that out but I'll still go through with a little light brushing get some of that out and uh, clean it up nicely. On the back end here I'm gonna go ahead and secure these with some uh, liquid adhesive right there on the very ends and then uh, sand that up just a little bit more because as you can tell there's the finish here at the bottom we have got to make sure it's nicely roughed up and then I'm gonna start nailing it so we'll see you back in just a minute all right everyone so I'm gonna take this little nylon looking toothbrush thing and carefully just go through the edge here and try to clean up some of these little pieces of leather sticking up now obviously it's not gonna get all of it it's one of those things that 
as the person wears these. Sometimes these little things will just kind of fall out, in other words, but getting in there to clean them up really a lot. Most shops won't even do this part of it just because they already know that those little small fibers are just going to pop right out. But I want to make sure I'm being careful not to damage that finish there. I mean, it is a fairly soft nylon brush, but it is a brush after all. So, and that's all taken care of. Now we're going to go ahead and do our clinch nails on the back of the heel. And most of you that have been watching for some time already know about the clinch nails. Well, the clinch nails, they're fairly long, like that there. They're brass, and they're going to go clear through the leather to the inside of the shoe. Hit the steel last right here, that's why this one's so beaten up. And then turn into a hook, so it really holds nice and tight. Oops, just dropped that there. Don't want to drop nails all over. But because these aren't stitched all around, and typically most Blake stitch shoes aren't, and a number of Goodyear welted shoes is the same thing, they're not. Dang it, just bent that one because I was talking. They're not stitched all the way in the all the way around to the back of the heel here. So there's you gotta secure it somehow. Now obviously we're gonna have nails holding the heel blocks on these guys here. They're gonna be holding them on, but the dilemma is that the heel blocks they can still pop off and those nails seem to hold mainly the heel block and uh, when you don't have additional nails like these clinch nails here they uh, there is uh, still too much surface area that it may start coming up on one of the corners somewhere so definitely want to make sure these are on there so there we go. And we're just gonna do the other side the same way. I did the other shoe already. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nails holding it around like that. Some shoes require more, some less. It just depends on the build. This one's got such a tapered heel back here that there really isn't need for more. And less won't hurt, but uh, on this particular one, nine seems to be a good one there. Sometimes you could do seven or five, sometimes it's 11. It always ends up being odd numbers. So, just the way it is. Because you got a few going down the side and a few here and then one in the center at the back here. And that's why it's always odd numbers. Only time is if the heel block is kind of like a funky odd shape, then uh, then you might end up with an even number instead of an odd number. Uh, one nail short. Dang it. Grab it over here. I usually take a little pile and put it over here and end up with one nail short there. Alright. There we go. All taken care of. Ready for some glue. I did sand that out just a little bit more. Did a little bit of uh, liquid sealants right here at the very edges where the stitching is. And now I'm just going to glue it up and uh, attach the heel bases and then go from there. So now these, it looks like they weren't actually nailed from the inside. A lot of heel blocks are nailed from the inside. And uh, after examining everything closer and removing these nails, it looks like they were originally nailed in from the top and we're probably going to do that again the only thing is i'm going to have to readjust where the positioning of some of the nails will be because usually these ones here you don't use because there's a high probability that eventually they may end up poking through on the inside of the heel and you don't want that the outer ones here on the edges that's a thicker area of the heel block so there's almost no chance that the nails will end up poking through on the inside of the shoe so i'm gonna do these outer ones here and then this one I'm probably going to skip down to a little bit lower because the problem was the heel block was kind of peeling up. And so we want to make sure that it's secured on there very well. And I'm going to make sure that they're all readjusted. See, it's the same story here. It's like they had this weird shaped nailing machine or something. And it kept missing that corner right there. So we'll get it taken care of. And uh, when it's time to do the heels, well, 
I'm gonna have to readjust the heel heel bl heel block on these to be able to accommodate a JR heel because the JR dovetail and the JR Vibram combination heels are both fairly thick and if I just slap them on like that everything's gonna be off and it's gonna look like a much higher heel so I gotta make sure I take down however much I need to to make sure that the height and uh, and the angle of everything the pitch is not off so I'll be messing around with that off camera but uh, throughout portions of it I'll let you check it out and see what everything looks like so we'll see you back in just a little bit all right, everyone, so we're back here again with these. Got the heel bases glued on and nailed. I did grab a punch all like this, and uh, it didn't quite work because this leather heel block is very, very dense, so I had to use this one. And I've repunched new holes because it looks like it just went in a circle in the center, but repunched them so it actually gets all the corners properly now. And then I re before the nails, I readjusted the angle of the heel block to be able to accommodate these JR Vibram heels. And that way it's gonna sit nicely there. So gonna go ahead and uh, just uh, glue it all up and continue on. All right, everyone, so we're almost done. We've got the heel, uh, top lift heels on, the bases and everything. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some uh, leather Fabings dye, then the light blue. Um, the dark blue obviously is gonna darken up quite a bit. You can already see I used the same, same exact method on the soles, I just didn't show you. Um, I had to make a decision on what I was going to do but with the light blue I'm just going to get that on there and I can go straight towards the uh, to using the cream which I do often uh, but when you use the leather dye it soaks in a little bit deeper so as you wear out that finish it still stays blue at least a little while longer so I'm going to put that on there and then after that's all dry I'm going to use some of the Saphir Seraphim cream in the blue finish that off and before I head home tonight I have to run the nails in and I don't need to on these heels but I think they'll look kind of nice with some silver nails don't you all right we'll be back in just a few minutes then all right so these are basically dry now you can tell it's definitely lightened up quite a bit it looks kind of nice actually almost almost tempted to leave it like that However, I um, still want to make sure that has a nice coating that's finished off instead of just the dye because the dye can end up rubbing off in a bad way if you don't uh, introduce any kind of waxes into it like the seraphim cream has. There's a high probability if you walk on some carpet or something, it'll kind of come off. The other thing is you can see that the rubber portion of the heel almost turned purple, in other words, and that happens with leather dyes. It has like a almost uh, bronze chrome look to it again i kind of like that actually but it's gonna rub off quickly onto everything and anything and the solvents that are in in this cream will help even it out and remove it from areas where it shouldn't be basically so we're using this cream as a sealant in other words And I put it on the rubber as well, just because obviously some of it's gonna get on there anyways. And if I don't put it on the rest of the rubber area, it it's gonna have like this odd stained look almost maybe. And I don't want that, so. Okay. Now I'll just take it to the buffer, buff it up real quick, and then we'll be uh, ready for some nails. Again, with the JR Vibram combo heels, I, I did a video recently on it um, from the time of this recording talking about the different uh, JR heels because there are the JR dovetail heels and the classics and then these. And on the classics, adding those decorative nails is almost a must just because the, uh, the leather and the rubber don't seem to want to cooperate when they're adhered from the factory too well. And since they don't cooperate, it can peel up, especially if you apply some heat. Where the JR and Vibram ones, that Vibram rubber does cooperate with the adhesive and the uh, and the leather from JR very well. So you don't really have to add the nails.
All right, everyone. So had a little bit of a mishap trying to get those nails in there. So it turns out the nails that I have, they have kind of like this really pointed tip on there. And when I was hammering them down with a punch hole, one of them just collapsed in there. And so realized that the nails aren't going to really work so well on this heel, uh, at least that particular type of nail. The brass ones would look, well, would work better, but they wouldn't look quite right. I didn't want to do gold. So decided to stay away from the nails on that one. Had to redo the heel. I mean, I could have taken the other shortcuts and taken out the heels and filled it in with some kind of gunk or something, but I didn't want to do it the cheap, fast way. So I'd gone ahead and tore off the heel and did it properly. So instead I ended up going ahead and doing that little channel there and get some silver in there. Got a little bit of blue on that Vibram so it stands out some. And uh, as you saw, I sanded out the edges a little bit nicer. And at this point, they're going off to Marcus. He's gonna be doing the edges on them, cleaning them up, giving the full treatment. And we've got the insoles glued in and they're, they're just about ready to go. So we're gonna hand it off to Marcus now.